now, Mike's Thoughts. All right, so I've got some things to talk about. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I don't work in the NFL. I don't work in Major League Baseball. I don't work in the NHL. I don't work for a big, extremely big, multi-billion dollar corporation. I work in middle America. And in middle America, when an employee comes and fills out an application, I have to put them through a background check. And when I put them through a background check, it tells me everything that I need to know. Tells me whether or not I can hire this guy, whether or not I can do this, whether or not they've got anything pending. But apparently they don't have that in Major League Baseball or in the NFL. Because today, the NFL put the Eagles, Josh Sills, on the commissioner exempt list. And they put this scumbag on the exempt list for rape and kidnapping. And I start reading about the story and I'm like, all right, let's see what's going on here. Let's see what, you know, what's being said. Well, this rape was reported the night that it happened in December of 2019. While Sills was still at the University of Virginia. Why in the hell was this man drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles? How did the Philadelphia Eagles just now, a week and a half before the Super Bowl, figure out that this guy was going through a grand jury indictment? How the hell did they not know that this had happened back in 2019 when it was reported that night? And furthermore, how the hell did it take the court system three years to get this damn thing into an indictment through a grand jury? You've got to freaking be kidding me. This guy pulled a woman into his truck and raped her and would not let her leave. She knows that it was him because she knew Sills. They had known each other for about seven or eight years, according to the reports. This is absolutely asinine. And I don't understand how MLB, how NFL, how NHL, how any of these entities that are multi-billion dollar corporations don't do background checks on their players and can play like they're surprised when stuff like this pops up. There is no way you can convince me that this is the first that the Philadelphia Eagles are hearing about it. There is no way you can convince me of that. This thing happened three years ago. Three freaking years ago. I hired a guy a couple months ago, and the thing came back and told me, oh, you know what? He had a a driving ticket six years ago when he was 19. You might not want to let him drive your vehicles. (laughs) his ticket was for speeding and they told me about it this guy (laughs) raped a woman and you're going to tell me you didn't know about it if that is the case everybody in the Eagles front office needs to be fired because they clearly do not do their jobs pisses me off Buck cue the music are you ready for the best damn radio show on the planet Man Hour Nation, rise up. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour at the dark. Say that Why bring you the host, Mike, Buck, and Cone? You know they coming to the stage. Boy, talk to what you about to hear right here. I second that. Go. You know that it's us when we talking about sports that's Giving you facts on the field to the core uh, Tune in, we need the support One hour too short, tell us some more Oh no, your station not dropping no music Starts like Adidas, but Nike just do it Then four on the fourth, we go for the win Michael, two seconds, we taking it in Buck, Mike, and Combs, you know what's going on Man, now we're at the dark, no LA We the big spark, no fourth and inches Won't cut short, got the best talk in this all sports Buzzing more than buzz beaters We coming live, all three speakers go 
And what is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Bakasha here with the Man Hour. Be sure to head to manhourradio.com. Check out the merchandise page, of course. Check out the blog section as well. Takeaway 22 merch is live and active over there. And, of course, the new Flame Man Hour merch is live over there as well, guys. So definitely support the brand. Support those logos. Support all of our cause that we have popping in over there each and every day over at manhourradio.com. If you are new here, consider subscribing and liking and sharing whatever platform you're listening to us on youtube.com or facebook.com it doesn't matter sharing is caring at the end of the day today is wednesday and that means one thing and one thing only it is if and then wednesday we're going to talk about jimmy g they're divorced from the San Francisco 49ers. We're, and then we're going we're, we're gonna to dive in to the Super Bowl. We got to get some Super Bowl talk out there because we've been kind of neg- neglecting it a, like a little bit. David Combs, my Kansas City Chiefs are in the freaking Super Bowl, baby. And they're going to win the freaking Super Bowl over those ratchet Philadelphia Eagles. And I'm glad you ran it out about that a little bit here with the still sting, right, Combs? Because... When I first read it and I first saw it, I'm like, this has just got to be, like, alleged, right? I mean, why, why, why hasn't the NFL done anything about this? Because when we think about this, Mashawn or Desh- Deshaun Watson allegedly was getting happy endings and massages. And he, got, so he was basically kicked out of the NFL for a year and a half. And this guy's been playing in the NFL for two or three years. Like, what, WTF, mate? Like, that, that's just crazy to me. It, it's crazy and it's it's to me like i said man it's even crazier how d- this woman knew who did it to her yeah how, how did it take three years to get this this guy arrested and indicted on these charges yeah i i, I don't know man to me. <laughs> yeah it just I mean like i i i i understand the whole due process thing but if she can say this guy did it here's his semen in my vagina uh, like like what? <laughs> like if I if, yeah. if I don't pay my child support, the government finds my, whatever job I'm at. They'll find yep. me within two weeks, and they'll they'll take. If they can do that for child support, right. then you tell me they can do that for rape. How about this? In the state of Missouri, if you miss too much of two months of child support, they will throw you in jail because you don't have child support. Then you will ultimately probably lose your job because you're in jail because you can't go to work until you pay your child support. Uh, uh, yeah, but yeah, but this it's guy's insane. out playing in the NFL, making million dollars of rape. I, 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 I don't how, know, man. How did they not know about the charges? How did they not know that there was an investigation for three freaking years? They're just learning of it as we're learning of it. You're kidding me, right? Well, if we think about this, what about that punter uh, that was drafted? Was it by Arizona? I think it was, and he allegedly raped a girl at a house party and like a gangbang. Those charges and got then they dropped. Found out it wasn't true. Yeah, yeah. And those charges got dropped, and he literally lost his NFL career. Like, right? I don't, I don't you know, you look at guys like 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 Trevor Bauer, who the text messages come out showing that it was just consensual sex. The problem was Trevor Bauer's case came up in 2020, and that's when everybody was all you know in in their feels about things that were going on in the world. <laughs> yeah, and, and and so he has consensual sex and, and his, his girlfriend likes getting choked during sex yeah and now all of a sudden you want to you want to suspend him for two and a half years this guy actually rapes a woman yep and gets to play in the nfl for three years and, and nobody knows about it do you do you want to know why combs let's just state the obvious ready white privilege yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. But but guys, it, this has been a big news day here in the NFL and around the world in general. Tom Brady has officially announced his retirement after 23 years in the NFL. He does say he is gone for good this time. Now there are speculations that he's just saying this to get his foot in the door in Miami or San Francisco or back to New England. Yada yada yada. Combs, I saw on Man Hour Chicago where you basically posted a heartfelt message of, like about your time hating slash loving Tom Brady. I mean, yeah. you you got to live in the New England area in the height of the Tom Brady mania. Like, 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 like do you think Tom Brady is that damn good? And like, give me some memories. Of yeah, him. look, Tom Brady is is the greatest of all time. I mean, there, there's no question. 
Uh, it, it, all the numbers, I mean, they're ridiculous numbers. They're ridiculous stats. It's, it's insane when you start talking about all the things that he's done in his career. But my earliest memory of him is, is what actually drew me to him. Now, I, I lived in New England for 15 years. I hated the Patriots because I hated their fan base. They were annoying as hell, and, and it, it drove me nuts. But Tom Brady was playing in the a game against the Baltimore Ravens. And in that game against the Baltimore Ravens, Ray Lewis comes through the line untouched. Tom Brady sees this, completes a 30-yard pass downfield, and takes a hit to the chest from Ray Lewis. Because back then, you could hit the quarterback. Yep. And that right there, I was like, damn, this guy just stood in, took a full-out, no-block freaking sack from (laughs) Ray Lewis and completed a pass 30 yards downfield and didn't have to didn't have to do anything like he to me is is just the great not the things that he did with why with zero big name wide receivers yep. right like he made wide receivers wide receivers they're, they're, troy brown left the patriots because he thought he was you know he wanted to be the number one and he should have been more involved in the playbook he went to seattle was nothing for three years came back to new england to be to re <laughs> relive his career <laughs> then you, you get guys like I, i'm talking about guys like small name guys guys on any other team that aren't anything Wes walker okay, you're julian J- west walker julian edelman the list can go on and on and on these guys were made by tom brady how about this then tom brady finally gets a hall of fame wide receiver and what does he do he only goes 16 and 0 and completes all sorts of uh uh touchdown records and, and passing records in that season like <laughs> he, this guy was something different he was special man and it was fun to watch yeah and that's exactly where i was going to go because with randy moss if you guys remember that yes randy moss was a hall of fame career right but at that particular time guys randy moss was in like on three teams in like six weeks right combs because he was with the titans and then uh some other team was like the 49ers or something like and then he went back to the titans and then he ultimately ended up with the patriots and it was just like Oh, this guy's washed up, yada, yada, yada. And the next thing you know, he's catching, what, like 30 touchdowns in the season. It was crazy. It was like yeah. 56 touchdowns or something. Yeah. Like it, was, it was insane. Like, it was it was nuts. And, I mean, then you see him leave, and, and everybody, you know, people have asked ever since he leaves New England, you know, was it Brady or was it Belichick? And it's clear that it was Brady. Look, Belichick is going on his 10th season. His 10th season oh, now without Tom Come Brady on, as a head coach. He has one playoff win without Tom Brady as a head coach. He, look at the team, one though, he's win had, too, though. seasons without Tom Brady, and with Tom Brady, he's won six Super Bowls. He went to the playoffs with a rookie quarterback in Mac Jones and Cam Newton. Like, They've won, he's won one playoff game without Tom Brady. He went, he went to the Super Bowl with Tom Brady as a rookie. Are you kidding me? That was a Drew Bledsoe team. Let's just be honest about that. But uh, they won the Super Bowl with Tom Brady. You're right. Drew Bledsoe got hurt in like week ten that year. Yeah, but he didn't he come back for the playoff game and then he got benched too. Like was it the Super Bowl he got benched or the uh, he got benched sometime in the playoffs? Because I remember watching the uh, uh, Brady thing. Um, what was that? Uh, the man in the man in the arena, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was. Uh, Are you gonna go see eighty for Brady? You know, I don't. I don't know. I probably not. But. I'm probably going to have to see it just because Gronk's in it and Michelle's yeah. going to make me go see it. <laughs> right. Uh, what I'm actually more intrigued about is Sunday night. They are releasing that Baltimore uh, Ravens 30 for 30 on ESPN back when they won the Super Bowl with like Ray Lewis yeah, and Shannon absolutely. Sharp and like all that stuff. The second greatest defense of all time. That was the absolutely. best defense of all time. The second greatest defense. The of all best time. defense. If you ever of talk all time. about the eighty-five Bears like that again, I will throat punch you. Yeah, they're not even a fought tie. Fought tie. Don't fought, tie. don't don't you don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Well, what what we are going to do is we are going to get into the if and then Wednesdays here, and Jimmy G and the San Francisco Forty Nine ers have been on marriage counseling for the last couple of years. Let's just say that. And Kyle Shanahan has officially come out and said that divorce is probably going to be imminent with this Jimmy G and the San Francisco 49ers and got, and Combs, the New York Jets seem to be out there looking for that next quarterback. They don't think Zach Wilson is the guy or white either. So uh, with that being said, we have to talk about Jimmy G going to the New York football jets. So the if and then question of the night is if Jimmy G 
does ultimately end up going to the New York Football Jets, then what? Oh, man. Um, they're a playoff team next year. I mean, if they get any quarterback, they're a playoff team next year. I mean, I've heard lots of rumors. I've heard Jimmy G. Um, I've heard Derek Carr. I've heard a lot of names out there. If they get any quarterback that is better than their current situation, which is basically you or me, um, <laughs> so I, they would be a playoff team, and, and they would be they would be a threat to the Bills to win the East. Uh, yeah, I mean, I. I definitely like that just because they less flashback a little bit to earlier in the Jets season. They were a playoff team with their current situation, like just like as is. But once Brees Hall went down with that torn ACL, we saw that, you know, the true colors of Zach Wilson, right? Like he was definitely relying on the running game to be successful in the end. And if Jimmy G does go to the uh, New York football Jets Combs, they are probably an AFC championship team because let's think about this. Every time Jimmy G is healthy, yes, he is injury prone and broken leg and shoulder and like whatever. But every time he plays a 16 game season, his team goes to the championship game combs. He has led yeah. the San Francisco 49ers to a Super Bowl, two, a, to two NFC championship games. And yes, the 49ers are a great team. But their coaching sucks in San Francisco. Let's just be honest. Kyle Shanahan is not a great X's and O coach. He he might be a good motivational coach, but he he just not that coach, right? Robert Sala is yeah. that coach. Robert Sala can get the best out of Jimmy G. We see it with Zach Wilson. We've seen it with Mike White. We've seen it with Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco had flashes of his Super Bowl self his first couple weeks. Uh, that like just like he played. Like what? Joe Flacco still playing really? Yeah. He was probably the best quarterback yeah. on like on that team, to be honest. But yeah, if Jimmy G does go to the New York Jets, they are a, definitely a playoff team, definitely a competition for the Buffalo Bills winning the East. But I, I would put them in the AFC Championship game, Combs, because it, the, it, Jimmy G just wins. Yeah, I mean, that's all Jimmy G does is win. It, it, everywhere he goes, he finds a way to win. Even with San Francisco, look, he's a, he is not a great quarterback. He's he a great game a manager. Guy, he, he's not. He's he's not in, in in a top ten. He might not even be in the top twenty of actual quarterbacks in this league. But he finds a way to win. It's it's Tim Tebow, a little bit flashier, right? Like a little bit better it, looking. That's all that it is. <laughs> he he knows how to win, and Jimmy G finds a way to do it on every level. Now he's also the same guy that might find a way to lose you a game in the fourth quarter, but he. He finds ways to win. This is a guy who just does it over and over and over again. Part of me wonder starts to wonder how much of this is actual Kyle Shanahan, though, too. How much is this is the San Francisco 49ers system? Because then you bring in Brock Purdy, the last pick in the NFL draft, right? Who goes seven and one and loses in the NFC title game after getting hurt and, and half the defense going down. Like so I I don't I don't know what the 49ers do, but I do believe I, Jimmy G is definitely moving on. He's not he's not in the San Francisco 49ers organization at the beginning of the next season. Yeah, so the, so basically the problem with San Francisco 49ers and Jimmy G is he's going to warrant a $25 million contract in the end. They have two rookie deal quarterbacks on the staff as is that is probably just as good as Jimmy G is. And they still got to pay uh, uh, Nick Babosa. They got to pay Debo. They they have a lot of people coming up for contracts in the end here. So, uh, I mean, by default, who do you want out of there? Sorry, Jimmy G. You, you you could definitely be a starter on this team, but Brock Purdy is a million dollars and you're 25. Who am I going to take? Right? I mean, that's just yeah. what it is at, at, the, at the end of the day. Now, to, to compile onto that, Combs, when I posted this, that a divorce is imminent in San Francisco, many people think that he's going to be a backup. Like a backup in Carolina, a backup in Dallas, a backup in Vegas. Do you think Jimmy G is possibly a starter in the NFL, or is he going to be a backup? I mean, you have to go back and you have to look at every single quarterback in the league, right? And you have to start thinking, like, where could Jimmy G play? Where could he be a starter at? You know, one of the places that you could see him going would be Houston. D'Amico Ryan's going to Houston. D'Amico yep. could bring a guy with him. 
Um, you know, you could see him going to try to think of other places, the Jets, you know, that don't have a great quarterback situation, the Carolina Panthers don't have a great quarterback situation. You know, there's a, there's a lot of teams that, that you could see him going into uh, maybe even, I mean, and this is just throwing us out there to Denver Broncos hmm. because they just went out and they just went and got Sean Payton, right? Sean Payton did all a, a lot of stuff with Drew Brees, and Jimmy G's no Drew Brees, but neither is Russell Wilson. And I'm telling you right now, I would rather go into a 17 game season with Jimmy G as my quarterback than Russell Wilson. Well, let's think about that though. Drew Brees also wasn't Drew Brees until Sean Payton took him over, right? So if you remember mm-hmm. right, Sean Payton, or sorry, Drew Brees was just an average quarterback at best at Charger land, and then they drafted Phillip Rivers to basically, you know, replace him, what, f- f- four years after the fact. And, of course, he tore, like, his rotator cuff or something. But they ultimately chose Phillip Rivers over Drew Brees, and they both ended up having great careers. But Drew Brees wasn't that good in Charger land until Sean Payton did take him over. So maybe that's just what Russell Wilson does need. Drew Brees in San Diego was averaging – uh, 15 touchdowns um, to, or I'm sorry, 24 touchdowns to uh, 14 interceptions. Which, which back and, then, and 24 touchdowns was of, kind of a lot. But he's all he's always thrown a lot of interceptions, right? Until later in his career when he wasn't trying to go deep, um, and so he's always thrown for, but he's always thrown for a lot of yardage. He was good in San Diego. The problem was he didn't get along with the coach. Coach didn't like him, and then they went and drafted. Um, Philip Rivers. Uh, Philip Rivers, you know, probably because they were like, look, this guy's going to have 95 kids. Why not have him in San Diego? And they said they, they draft Philip Rivers, and Brees was like, no, I want out. I'm not going to sit around, and I'm not going to do this. I, we don't get along. We don't run the same offense that I want to run. And that's when they traded him to, to New Orleans. And, you know, it, it, Drew Brees was still a good quarterback in San Diego. But Sean Payton definitely took him to the next level. I mean, he took that whole, that franchise took them to the next level. Yeah, uh, but I will always forever be a Drew Brees hater because in 1996, his his Purdue Boilermakers went down to Dallas, Texas to play my Kansas State Wildcats in the Cotton Bowl. No, it was sorry, it was the Alamo Bowl. And that stupid ass train was driving through downtown San Antonio like at three o'clock in the morning, blowing. And Drew Brees Did whooped it run our over ass. Your foot. No, Drew Brees whooped our ass. Michael my, Michael Bishop and Kevin Lockett and those boys, D- D- Darren Sproles was like on that team. They whooped our ass. It was just embarrassing. Embarrassing. <laughs> Moving on, Combs. Nasty. What's that? They were nasty then. Yeah, they were they, they were pretty good. Moving on here. So let's 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 go ahead and talk about some some uh, Super Bowl talk here. If and then statements from the Super Bowl. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes has a very high ankle sprain. Normally, it takes about four to six weeks for this ankle sprain to heal. He played on it just five days after the fact, and now he has two days until that Super Bowl. So, obviously, that four to six window is out, basically. So, he is probably not going to be 100%. So, Combs, with that being said, if Patrick Mahomes is not at least 80% for the Kansas City Chiefs going into the Super Bowl, then what? He's not going to be at least 80% going into the Super Bowl, but I don't think it matters. I He is going to find a way to do the things that he always does, just like he found a way in the AFC title game. Uh, he, he is beyond comprehension sometimes with some of the things that he is capable of doing he is a top three quarterback in this league and he's just going to find a way to get it's going to be a great matchup the super bowl matchup is going to be great man i can't wait to watch this game from from a for a a fan that has you know is is only going to be rooting for his squares to hit like (laughs) this game is going to be so much fun to watch because i believe it's going to be back and forth I believe this is going to be a very high scoring game. I don't think anything's going to come of it. I do think that if he is not as mobile as he can be, I think that Reddick is going to cause a lot of havoc for him. I think that the ends of, of Philly are going to cause a lot of havoc for him. Same way that Cincinnati caused a lot of havoc for him. And so 
I, you know, it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be interesting to see. I don't think that there's any way where he is like less than a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, he he probably isn't going to be 100% because let's, let's be honest, a sprained ankle takes longer to heal than a broken bone in the end just because, like, you're always trying to, it gets like it gets hurt, yada, yada. But with that being said, says said, Combs, first of all, I hate Nick Wright. I despise his long, oily, greasy-ass hair, his elf-looking face. I hate everything about Nick Wright. But he nailed exactly what Patrick Mahomes is on the nose here. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL. Then it's Joe Burrow. Then it's Josh Allen. And then he said coming in at number four is Patrick Mahomes on one foot. Do, do we realize that Patrick Mahomes played the whole game literally at about 50 per, 50%? When he was trying to scramble Combs, he was basically doing like a one like a one leg hop and trying to dive forward. And he still completed like a 15 yard pass. It was absolutely sickening. So even if he's not 100%, even if he's 90%, I, I take Patrick Mahomes at 70% versus the Philadelphia Eagles defense here, and he is going to be just fine. Why? Because they had a game where Patrick Mahomes couldn't scramble. He was very immobilized. He looked like pretty much Dan Marino like his last year in Miami, right? He was just, it was just a, a statue back there, right? Ben, ben Roethlisberger as like, just like almost, right? But now the Kansas City Chiefs know how to block that. Now they know what to expect, and then, and now they have two weeks to prepare for for that. If Patrick Holmes is not at least 80%, 80% the Philadelphia Eagles are going to be in a world of hurt. I think Patrick Holmes is more dangerous being in the pocket than he is mobile because when he's mobile, we know what they're going to do. They're going to stretch the field, right? They're, they're, they're going to try to pass the ball down the field. When he's unmobile, you don't know what's going to happen. At a flick of a wrist, he can throw the ball 60 yards or he can throw it like on a five-yard out. The Chiefs are dangerous if he's not 100% Combs. Very, very dangerous. You look upset there. So now that – I mean, I'm just wondering when you're going to be done going full Tony Romo on me. Where, where you're just going to be – like, I know they say when you have a stutter, you should put marbles under your tongue. But you should probably not put Patrick Mahomes marbles under your tongue. What? Okay, what? you need to get you need to get his jock out of your mouth, and you need to chill out with your look. Patrick Mahomes is a good quarterback. Yeah, if Patrick Mahomes is not at least if he if he's only seventy five percent, you're still going to get a hundred and fifty percent out of him. Because he is that guy. Yeah. Okay. I, I completely agree with you. You keep going with all the other stuff, but we we don't even have to say hey, you, anything more. You say you're gonna. It's gonna get repeated at the Super Bowl 112 times by Tony Romo. Yeah. But it is what it is. Arthur Brown jumped in the chat here. Says Eagles for the win. Yeah. Probably not. But I mean, we'll put your comment. I don't up know, there. man. I I'm I'm getting. I, I'm half and half with it i don't i really don't know who to pick in this game yeah i i think it's going to be a really close one i think it's going to be high scoring um but it, if patrick mahomes is at 75 percent, i'm telling you right now man that offensive line better be able to give him a ton of time because you're going to have reddick breathing down your neck you've got i'm the the eagles defense is no joke the evil Eagles front seven is probably one of the best in the NFL right now. So oh, they are the best. I, yeah. Yeah. Hands down. I, I would not, I would not sleep on this team. I would not say that they are dead in the water. Um, it's going to be a close game. It's going to be a good game. Uh, you know, look, the Eagles are going to be down on offensive lineman now with Josh Sills <laughs> going to prison. Allegedly. Freaking clown. He was just indicted. Yeah. <laughs> Guy needs to go to prison for the rest of his life. Yeah. Anyway, it, it, so they're down an offensive lineman, so it could be you know they're they're going to be a little bit in disarray too. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to see how that that hampers them. Um, Jalen Hurts, this is his time. We'll see, this is his time. He's made a believer out of me all year long. He if if he can come out and he can outplay Patrick Mahomes in this game, or at least keep up with him. We have to start talking about whether or not Jalen Hurts is a top five or ten quarterback as well. So I'm glad you brought that up. So let me ask you this question because obviously Patrick Mahomes is not going to be 100% in this game, 75, 80% tops, right? And you just said, mm-hmm. if you th- 
if if Jalen Hurts matches his level of play, we have to talk start talking about him. I like about a top five, top ten quarterback in the league. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Pump those brakes because a Patrick Mahomes at seventy five percent, you cannot elevate your play over him. How does that make you a top five quarterback? A little lonely MVP candidate, like at that point. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like he's got to. He's got to outplay or or at least match. We don't know what Patrick Mahomes is going to be capable of doing. He's got two weeks to rest that ankle up. He's probably not even going to be at the walkthroughs. He's going to be <laughs> elevating that leg all the way until kickoff. And I don't I you don't know what he's going to be. Look, modern medicine, you know, maybe they'll they'll wrap some some cocaine inside of it to numb it up. I don't know whatever they're going to do now at the NFL level cuz they just do whatever the hell they want. Is, is he? I think he's going to be just fine. I think he's going to be at 100, percent or at least he's going to feel like he's at 100. percent Yeah, those quarter drone shots are a very powerful drug, right? And and of course, adrenaline yeah. is a, is as well. But Arthur Brown yeah. says a quarterback like a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes is you have to attack him inside and then out. Put him, put pressure on him, and make him feel uncomfortable. I don't think Patrick Mahomes really ever feels uncomfortable combs mean even when he does get pressure on the inside he casually rolls the pocket is always looking downfield making looking to make that play if you get pressure on the outside he steps up in the pocket he scrambles for for like 15 yards he's a very comfortable in the pocket yeah and and i you know like i said we got two really good quarterbacks uh both are very comfortable in the pocket both this is going to be a great game and, yep. and Patrick Mahomes is just one of those guys. Like he just finds a way. He he finds the open guy. Um, you know there there was a lot of things that went their way in that game against Cincinnati that that could have turned that around. And um, you know if for every guy that they had injured, they replaced him with a referee. So oh my god, here we go. Hashtag NFL's rigged, right? <laughs> No, <laughs> NFL's not rigged, but they had a lot of calls that that did not go their way. That 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 freaking uh, that the holding call that they should have called there that allowed the um, the completed pass there, or the, I'm sorry, allowed uh, Mahomes to get away at the end there before the penalty to Osai. I mean, yeah, there we go. That was a huge one too. Yeah, yeah. Was, the so block was in the... the back that they missed on, on the return. That was a big one. Yeah. You know, you said yourself the other night, if they don't get back to the 50, oh, they probably yeah. don't. We were probably going to overtime. 100%. So that missed block in the back is another big one. So good thing for Mahomes. He had some friends in his pocket. Yep. Good good thing for Kansas City Chiefs fans that the Bengals fans are still salty about that. And I have a lot of Bengals fans I'm in not my even a Bengals fan family. Fan. Yeah. But anyways. It, I, just, I just call a spade a spade. <laughs> yeah. And the kettle is black, right? Or something. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. But anyways, black Holmes. Month. Many people, Combs, are thinking this game is going to be a very high-scoring game. 31-35 score, 42-35 score. I mean, I've seen a really a lot of really high scores on our Facebook page here. So, Combs, if this Super Bowl becomes a shootout like many people are predicting, then what? Then I think it favors the Chiefs. I really do. I, the Chiefs have more weapons. Um, and, and the Chiefs are more built for a shootout than the Eagles are. The Eagles are built for a a, a 31-27 type win, a 31-23, some something somewhere in that ballpark. If it starts beginning into into the 40, 40 to 35s, I, that's when I start thinking, all right, Kansas City's got the edge here. So if they keep it, I, I would say if if the under is under 58. I'm taking the Eagles. If it's over 58, I'm going Chiefs. Yeah, so 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 you're so you're thinking a, a shootout will favor the Kansas City Chiefs in the end. And yeah. I've been kind of going back and forth on this just because the Kansas City Chiefs defense has kept them in so many games this season that I, that yes, years past the Kansas City Chiefs offense would be built for a lot of shootouts. But let's just be honest, we really don't have that deep threat guy like a Tyreek Hill that can go and get us a score in 13 seconds. I I could try. Yes, we do have a lot of good receivers, and the receiving core is better right now. The offense is better, but they really aren't built to score 35 points plus in a game. So when I think of a shootout, I'm thinking 35-plus points on each side 
of the like oh of the ball and everything that I just said, I'm going to neglect because the Kansas City Chiefs have been there and done that with the coaching staff, with this defense, and with this quarterback. And the Philadelphia Eagles are built on defense this season. So you are exactly right on this, Combs. If it is a shootout, it is going to favor the Kansas City Chiefs in the end. I think the first team prior to 28 is probably going to win this game if it is a shootout. So with with all that being said, on the flip side of the coin, if this Super Bowl becomes a defensive slugfest, then what? Then it favors the Eagles. Um, if the the Eagles, that's where the Eagles have the edge. The Eagles' defense is better than the Chiefs' defense, hands down. And so, if it becomes a defensive battle, then I'm looking at the Eagles all day long. Uh, I, I'm looking at it right now. I'm look, go, going back and just taking a look. The Eagles have only scored 35 points twice this year, more than 35 points twice this year. Once against the Giants and once against the Packers. Okay, not not exactly world world beaters on that schedule, right? And I I just don't I, I think the 31 against the 49ers was a bit of an aberration. Um, just because they had a lot of injuries they were dealing with. There's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, hell, the seven of those points should have been taken back because Devontae Smith definitely did not catch that ball. Um, and so you, you're looking at stuff like that. This team is built to score between 27 to 31 points. That's really where they're at. And you get into a, a defensive battle and you get into a low-scoring game, like a 27-24 type game, I think that that does favor the Eagles. I think the Eagles will win that type of game. Yes. So just like the previous thing, I've been going back and forth on it as well. And as much as the Philadelphia Eagles are built on defense there this season, you said it best yourself. They've only scored 35 twice this season versus the Packers and the Giants, right? Both really not good defenses like on their own hindsight, but when we dive deeper into the numbers, the Philadelphia Eagles have had the easiest schedule in the NFL this season. The easiest. With with that being said, all of the offenses that they have played, Combs, they have been ranked in the bottom like in the bottom quarter of the league. So with that being said, they've had a very easy way to their first overall seed, their couple playoff wins, etc. So I'm not for sure if I'm sold on this Philadelphia team's defense because, yes, they do have 77 sacks on the season. Yes, they do have one of the most dominant defenses in the league right now, but they haven't played anybody. The Kansas City Chiefs will probably arguably be one of the best offenses that they ever that they will play all season long. And if this game becomes a defensive slugfest, I'm going to give it to the Kansas City Chiefs because they have been there and they've done that earlier in the season. They had the hardest schedule the first seven weeks of the season. Flash, flash back to August, right? When we were picking our games, we said... It is a win for the Kansas City Chiefs if they come out three and four in the first eight weeks of the season, right? They are battle tested. They've been there. They've done that. They've been in a lot of one score games. If, the, if it's a defense of slug of slugfest, the advantage goes to the Kansas City Chiefs, right? So, with 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 all that said, I'm saying the Kansas City Chiefs have advantage if it's a shootout or if it's a slug slugfest. So. The only the only way the Philadelphia Eagles I think have an advantage is if it is a you know it is a methodical game right one 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 person scores here one person scores here a couple three three and outs right now if a offense gets clicking the Chiefs win if it's a defensive slugfest the Chiefs win but if it's a back and forth game the Philadelphia Eagles like have a, like 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 well, like have a shot so if if this game is back and forth, right? One team has a 15 play drive and the next drive is a three, three, three and out, a fumble, interception, and then like a long drive again. Who do you think that favors then? I I think that's kind of a toss up. I really do. I don't think, I think that that's probably the most 50 50 out of all of them because you're, you, Again, 
to me, the Eagles defense is is hands down the better defense in this game. I don't even think it's close. Hmm. You can talk about Chris Jones all you want. You can talk about the Kansas City Chiefs defense. But, I mean, the Eagles defense is a powerhouse. Um, their front four and, is, yes. Their secondary kind of sucks. Their, their front seven is pretty damn good. Their secondary is good, too. What are you talking about? I don't, I don't. I don't think the Eagles' secondary is that good. I think the Chiefs' secondary is the best hit in the NFL. Really underrated, to be honest. Wow. Charles has jumped in the chat here. What's up, Charles? First, first time commenter I see here, and he says the Detroit Lions was in the top half of the offense. You are absolutely correct. First part of the season, the 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 the, the, the Detroit Lions shocked us all. Right, the Philadelphia Eagles beat them what? Was it thirty eight to thirty five? I think the I think the uh, the the, the uh, score was here, but at that time, like it's the, the first Eagles week of defense, the NFL season. The Eagles' defense was seventh in the league in points against. Right. The Chiefs were nineteenth. But also, look who the Eagles played. They played the Commanders. Who did the Chiefs play. Uh, we we were just talking about them. The first half of their season was a gauntlet, Holmes. I don't know about a gauntlet. I mean, you played the Cardinals, the Chargers, the Colts, the Bucks, the Raiders. None of those teams now, except for the Chargers, made the playoffs. I mean, but and earlier in the season, the we were saying like this is going to be a dangerous schedule. <laughs> you lost to the Colts. You lost to the Bills. Who didn't lose to the Colts? I mean, yeah, um, <laughs> like not like fourteen teams. <laughs> like <laughs> that's who right um you know i mean look you, you're winning one score games but you're winning one score games against teams like the titans uh who weren't very good this year you, you they were you good then a point game against the raiders but that's a divisional game so that's to be expected right. and the raiders always play you guys tough um the colts you lost a one point or a three point game there um you know the, the Chargers played you tough but they're another decent team um you know, but you got you, you just you're getting into a battle of of two really good teams. I think that this this was the best matchup the NFL could have asked for out of the final four teams. Uh, I it, really do. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to yeah. see it. I didn't want to see it. Like I have Bengals and Niners. I, I I really would have liked to have seen the Bengals win the Super Bowl because I think that fan base definitely deserves it. Mm. But this was definitely the best entertainment value matchup. That they yeah. could have had because these two teams are so evenly matched. Yeah. So uh, I actually had a question lined up yesterday. Is uh, do you think we are going to see this Super Bowl matchup more times than not in the next five or six seasons? Because the Chiefs are really no. young, the Eagles are really young. Yeah. But the NFC is so wide open right now. Right. Um. the The AFC is about three teams: the Bills, the Bengals, and the Chiefs. And the Bills are starting to really fade off. Are you not going to put the Jaguars up like up there? I think the Jaguars are going to be good. The Jaguars are up and coming. I mean, I, I think that they'll be there in a couple of years. I don't. I, you know, I think it's going to take a couple of years. And, and you know, hopefully for for their sake, you know, this wasn't a you know just a team playing above board for a season like some teams are known to do, like the Giants did this year as well. You know. Maybe the Chargers, you could probably throw them up there at some point. They they might put a couple of weapons and and, Kill and really OC. start to, yeah. yeah I, I mean they could really yeah, Kell Moore the OC. They they could really start doing some damage over there in LA. But I mean, this is really about three teams. The NFC now, you start looking at the NFC side of things, it's wide open. It's wide open. When you say You've it's wide the, open, the like Vikings. do you mean it's kind of top heavy with like the Cowboys and the Eagles and the Vikings? No. Or- no, the the cowboy the cowboys. Look, if the cowboys find a quarterback and find a running back, then yeah, they'll be good. They have the both top five quarterback and running back in the like in the league. Dak Prescott threw more interceptions than anybody else in the league this year, and he mm. missed five games. He only played twelve games, and he threw more interceptions than any other quarterback. Shit happened when you party naked, Combs. <laughs> no, no. He's not that guy. He can't for and, and he can't win big games. He definitely can't win big. He's, he's definitely just like her cousins when it comes to big games. So Dak Prescott. I, I don't so, so there's I, not there's I, I not 
def- defend Mike on this one. There's not a denif- <laughs> there's not a definitive number one seed in the NFC. You can't look at the NFC next year and be like, yep, the Eagles are going to run away with it again. You know, and I agree with that, and I agree with Charles as well here. He says Detroit next year, watch out. Uh, Detroit Lions will probably be a 10-win team next season, but I don't think they're winning the North. I think it's the, it, it is the Vikings to lose, like, at this point, right? But, Combs, do you possibly see the Detroit Lions making some noise in the NFC playoffs next year? No. No? <laughs> like, I, I, look, the, the, the Lions are going to be good. Um, the lions are, they're, they're up and coming, but I just, I don't trust that they can find a way to do the right thing. I don't I mean uh, they, they did nail this year's draft, right? I, I really like their, or sorry, last year's draft. I think they did really well in last year's draft. I'd be anxious to see what they do with the, uh, what the fifth overall pick. I think they got right. Some, 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 something like that. I can't remember. Yeah. 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 Maybe they'll trade it. No, with, the, the lions. Yeah. No, the Lions pick like twelfth or thirteenth. Well, they got that pick from the Rams, right? And the Rams are a top five. Oh yeah, pick that's right. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Never yeah. mind. Yeah. I mean, they I, do. I mean, I, I they really haven't dove too pick. much in, like into the death, but yeah, we are going to dive into the draft, man. When, when do you want to announce what we're what we're going to be doing? You know what? I think it's a great time right now because Charles says Vikings statistically are a, a fluke. And you know what is not a fluke is we will be in Chicago, Combs. We will be in Chicago for the NFL draft. We are going to be live on night one of the NFL draft at 115 Bourbon Street here in Chicago doing the show from the sports bar on stage. We've got a whole thing planned. I mean, it is going to be a night. You guys are going to want to come down, drink specials, food specials. There is going to be a ton of stuff going on. We're going to have some prizes to give away. We're going to play some trivia. We're going to be there about an hour before the draft to kind of do a, a Q&A session with all the people in the audience. You guys can ask us stuff. Uh, Tori is going to be there uh, remotely. He's going to be there breaking down the players for us and, and talking with you guys about what you think is going to happen. This is the biggest offseason in Chicago Bears history. And we're going to be in Chicago for the draft. This draft, the Bears have the number one pick. There's so many options of what they can do with the number one pick. I've got a lot of things that I think they're going to do with the number one pick. You can catch uh, catch Man Hour Chicago on Sunday mornings. I've got all sorts of things out there that I think that the Chicago Bears are going to do. Lots of trade options, lots of trade opportunities. And it's going to be an exciting night, man. It's going to be a really exciting night. This is a rabid city. This this bar is massive, and it is always packed, and it is going to be packed on draft night, and Man Hour is going to be there with you. We are going to be there, and Combs, I got some more breaking news to drop off. With that draft day special, Man Hour has teamed up with Fanix, and we are going to give away the number one overall jersey to a lucky fan. So if it is... If if the Chicago Bears draft, say, C.J. Stroud, let's just throw a name out there, we are going to give away a C.J. Stroud <laughs> jersey. Yeah, yeah, it'd be more like Will Anderson, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, that that's that's amazing news. That's the first I'm hearing of it too. So you're breaking news to yeah, me as break, well. It, I I literally just checked my phone because I've been waiting for 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 that email, and they said we are going to do it, and they are going to sponsor. 18 weeks of NFL pickums next year as well, Combs. So we are going to have a NFL pickum league, and if you get the top picks for that week, you get a team jersey of your choice. That big awesome. things, big things happening. Charles says, "Come to Detroit in 2024. We definitely will, man. And we'll when we go to Detroit, we will hook up with our man Luke G2 there." My, is that uh, where the draft is in 2024? I believe so. It is that Ford it's Field. So, yeah, I was thinking about that the other night, man. I didn't yeah. even know. I didn't even realize until I was putting together everything that the this year's draft is in Kansas City. Why didn't we go to your hometown? I I threw it out there, and you pretty much said like, "No, we're going to to, said, no, to this Chicago." Is the biggest damn draft in <laughs> Chicago Bears history, and we're they're going to home, f baby. it up, Combs. They're going to f it up. They're there. There's, there's no way they can F this up. They are going there's to no trade way. Justin Fields in the first round trick to the Houston Texans. And then the, and then the, uh, they're, they're going to F it up. They're, they're, they're going to trade Justin Fields. 
to get freaking, I don't know, CJ Stroud or Will Levis or somebody. If they do that, we're going to have to get FanX to send me a <laughs> new team's jersey because I will no longer be a Bears fan. Hey, there's always room for the Kansas City fans, baby. Let's do it. Uh, that won't happen. All right. Send us out, big guy. <laughs> Vikings, right? Man, our nation. Rise up. Bills, maybe. Bills? That way they can break my heart year after year just like the Bears do. Ha, <laughs> ha,